Imagine feeling scared, really scared. Fear races through your veins. Your stomach's knotted. Your eyes blur. Because you have to read aloud in class. Imagine carrying these fears every day. Imagine what that does to your self-confidence. You can't. Unless you're dyslexic. But imagine if dyslexia meant you had a special skill. A capacity to discover new solutions to old problems. Imagine if dyslexia was a gift. Capable of propelling you to the highest of achievements. Imagine that these achievements were made possible not in spite of, but because you were dyslexic. Well, they are. I bet you didn't know that, did you? Neither did I. I just thought I was stupid. I will sit right down, waiting for the gift of sound and vision. And I will see waiting for the gift of sound and vision. Inside Hereford Cathedral is the medieval chained library. Author Tom West is fascinated by this collection of priceless books and feels it symbolises our passion for the written word. Tom's book, In the Mind's Eye, argues that we are moving into a new era where pictures will replace the written word and that the unique visual skills of dyslexics will place them at the forefront of innovations in a dramatically changing society. Tom, a dyslexic himself, believes the future is visual and that the cathedral holds a greater treasure which illustrates the power of the image. But you also have the wonderful Mappa Mundi, Indeed. which sort of illustrates this world view of the medieval world. And so you have these two kinds of treasures right there together, the, the uh, treasures uh, of the word and the treasures of the image, sort of integrating different all kinds of knowledge. Communication. Yeah, it's really wonderful. Being in this room, it makes me think of the medieval clerk who is really handling information with reading, writing, counting, memorizing texts, learning foreign languages. And I think that what we're doing is really moving from that era. Most of our educational system is still devoted to that kind of knowledge, those kinds of skills and capabilities. And I think we're moving to another era where, where what we want is something more like a res Renaissance visual thinker like Leonardo da Vinci, where we will see our information visually. We will handle the information visually, we will solve problems visually, and that's quite a different way of handling our information than was available to the medieval clerk. Um, I'm Wesley and I go to Hayford Art College and I do photography. The whole point of this video is to show that you can be stupid at some things, which doesn't necessarily mean you're stupid at everything. I see the world as pictures, which means if I have an idea, I can picture it in my mind. Because I have difficulty with numbers and reading numbers, I shouldn't be really be able to use my camera, which is actually my main tool. But I've overcome this by developing a way of using it without actually thinking about the numbers at all. I can tell how much it's going to be in or out of focus and how blurred it's going to be simply by turning the dial one way or the other and knowing how much to do that. It used to be the case that people thought there was only one kind of intelligence and that was general intelligence. But for a number of years now, we've had people like Howard Gardner who have identified seven, eight or nine different forms of intelligence. There's uh, mathematical, logical intelligence, there's musical intelligence, there's a physical, sporting kind of intelligence, uh, and there's spatial and creative kinds of intelligence. And if you have a system which uh, focuses on one of these, then of course uh, it's to the detriment of all the others. My name's Alex, I'm 15, I live in Hereford and I go to White Cross High School. Being dyslexic, I'm quite good at physics at the moment, I'm doing electricity and I just seem to be able to picture in my mind how electricity works. When people that don't understand physics and when they try and copy my notes, they just can't understand my writing. And quite often neither can I. Being dyslexic, I seem to be able to understand computers. I find them easier than just writing stuff out. I can get my 
and work to look neat and tidy on word processors and I just understand computers, I understand the language, the layout, how to get things to work but more importantly they seem to understand me. curious thing about this this computer revolution is that we spend a lot of time with basic literacy skills and these are just the areas where a lot of dyslexics have the most trouble reading, writing, arithmetic. But, that, but one of the f strange things about it is that most of those skills are the things that really machines are taking over. That's the part of work that machines are good at. We had to learn these things painfully in school because we had no machines to do that kind of work. Now we have them. So really what what it was known from the beginning of the computer revolution back in the 40s, uh, the, the inventors saw this, they said the low-level brain skills are going to be gobbled up just as the steam engine gobbled up low-level manual uh, muscle power and really the high-level skills I believe will be have to do with interpreting complex information using complex images just the kind of thing that many dyslexics are good at. My name's Stephen Kresel and um, I'm studying photography and video. I'm good at taking photographs, I feel, because I can relate to images and pictures more than a sheet of words. Throughout my school life, the teachers have just said, you want to go to Sun Valley, mate, get to Sun Valley as soon as you can. That's a local big factory in Hereford. And it was drilled into me so much, I was just going to go down there. Since I got involved in this project, I've got so much confidence, I can just pick up any sort of camera and take a really good photograph and image. I also make my own music, which involves two vinyls, and the, you're playing the one, and you've got to mix in the other one. And I don't know how I do it, but I just, somehow it just happens in my head, and I sometimes close my eyes, and just mix the two together, and it sounds exactly the same one, but it's two records playing at the same time. Dyslexia is only a disability because society calls it a disability and makes it a disability. In fact, if we have a culture where we applaud each other's strengths and support and cooperate with each other, then the so-called disabilities disappear. I'm Philippa, I'm 15, I go to Bishops in Hereford and I like horses. When I first was diagnosed with dyslexia. I hated it. I thought it was thick, stupid, and very ashamed by it. Everyone used to, sister, when somebody called me thick, I used to get really upset by it, by thinking I was thick, that I couldn't do what she could do or what anybody else could do. I love doing puzzles. Um, they're situated all over the house. They're upstairs, downstairs, in the kitchen, in the lounge. Um, we've got one which is a cube, and that's like absolutely impossible to do. Nobody's done it. It's been here for over a year and a half now. Um, on Christmas Day, my granddad got a little sort of Rubik's Cube one in his cracker and he sat there for an hour trying to do it and he asked me to do it and I did it in about a minute. Really annoyed him. <laughs> Although I'm dyslexic, I'm very sort of good with people. Um, I don't mind sitting there, taking time to listen to somebody who's got a problem. They'll come to me, quite a lot of my friends inside and outside of school, if they do have a problem, they'll come and find me or phone me up and talk to me about it. My sister's just as bad with her boyfriend. She was comes up here as soon as she gets home and talks to me about it. Dyslexic people often have uh, intrapersonal intelligence, that is they're very good at relationships and at supporting people who are um, uh, finding things difficulty. They clearly have a role in industry in that kind of counselling role. But also since uh, the creative and imaginative skills are so important in problem solving, then all of these large companies are all the time having to solve problems um, which are uh, unique and which have, they haven't encountered before.